This demonstration is to help out with the week one discussion one post, which involves substituting values in for variables and evaluating the results. For this example, I'm going to go ahead and use my own birthday, which is June 12, 1983. So that means my A value is going to be 6, my B value is going to be negative 12, and my C value will be 83. I'll start with the first expression, a to the third minus b to the third. So in this one, my variables are a and b. I'm going to substitute in the integers uh, to replace a and b, the ones that I have chosen down here. So I'm going to substitute 6 in for a and negative 12 in for b. So I will rewrite this as 6 to the third minus negative 12 to the third. My next step will be to evaluate each of those. So I'm going to figure out what 6 to the third is. And on my calculator, I get 216. That's the same thing as doing 6 times 6 times 6. I'm essentially multiplying 6 to itself three times. I'm going to bring down my subtraction. And next, I'll do negative 12 raised to the third power. Negative 12 raised to the third power. That gives me negative 1,728. Now I have a situation where I'm subtracting a negative, which basically means that I'm doing the opposite of subtraction, which is addition. So I'm going to rewrite this as 216 plus 1,728. And then I'm going to go ahead and add those two numbers together. 216 plus... 1,728, and I get a result of 1,944. I'll move on to the second expression, which is a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. And again, I'm going to substitute um, 6 in for the variable a and negative 12 in for the variable b. So this then becomes 6 minus negative 12. Again, I'm going to have a double negative there because my v, b value is negative and subtraction was already part of the rule. And then here I'll replace a with 6. So this will become 6 squared plus, this is a times b, so that would be 6 times negative 12, plus b squared, so negative 12 squared. And now I'll start evaluating each part of that expression. Here again I have a double negative situation. I'm subtracting a negative, so that's going to change to addition. In my next set of parentheses, I'm going to start evaluating some of this bit by bit. 6 squared is 36. 6 times negative 12 is negative 72. And negative 12 squared is 144. It would be a positive value because I'm taking negative 12 times negative 12 and a negative times a negative results in a positive. Uh, now I'll go ahead and combine the numbers that I'm looking at here. 6 plus 12 gives me 18. And then 36 plus negative 72 plus 144 gives me 108. Now I just have one more step. When we've got parentheses that are right next to each other with no extra symbols in between, that signifies multiplication. So I need to take 18 and multiply to 108. And that gives me a result of 1,944. For this discussion, you are supposed to get the same results for the first expression and the second expression. Um, and if you want to be able to elaborate as to why that is, then I suggest going to the internet, going to any search engine, and typing in difference of cubes.
type that in and then um, whatever your search results pop up, take a look at how those results compare to what these two expressions look like. And then you might have your answer as to why it is that those two results end up being the same. Now I'm going to go ahead and evaluate the third expression, b minus c over 2b minus a. I'm going to substitute negative 12 for b, 83 for c, and 6 for a. So this becomes negative 12 minus my c value, 83. And then in the denominator, we have 2 times the b value. So for me, that's 2 times negative 12. And then we're subtracting the a value. And for me, that's 6. OK, I'm going to go ahead and evaluate the numerator first. Negative 12 minus 83. Negative 12 minus 83, negative 95. And in the denominator, I have 2 times negative 12, which would be negative 24, minus 6, which gives me negative 30. Now when you have a negative divided by a negative, the result should be positive. So I can go ahead and cancel out those negative signs and rewrite that as 95 over 30. And now I can start trying to figure out whether or not the numerator and denominator have any common factors that can be canceled out. Um, I know that 95 and 30 are both divisible by 5. So 95 divided by 5 is 19. So 95 is the same thing as 19 times 5. And then 30 is the same thing as 6 times 5. So they both have 5 as the common factor. Um, and now these common factors will cancel out. That's because 5 divided by 5 just results in 1. So my fraction written in lowest terms is 19 over 6. And I would want to leave my answer just like that. I don't want to do the division and get a decimal result. Uh, I'm supposed to get an answer in lowest terms, which means it still needs to be written in factored form. Um, so that is how you evaluate each of those expressions. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to send me an email or send me a text message.